Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the PSR podcast. This is season three, episode five, or season four, four, episode five. My bad. We're moving That's along. Weird. Yeah, we are. Um, we're here with a with a special episode. Um, we're broadcasting. We're actually recording the episode during earlier in the week. We're actually going to be, hopefully, this is in the middle of the marathon, the PSR marathon, unless something horribly wrong happened. But I have faith <laughs> that nothing will happen. Uh, in the next few days um, so um, we're gonna have a quick show for you guys to kind of take a little bit of a break from the from the event and uh, catch up on things that have been going on in the last I guess two months in PSR uh, because we didn't have a show last month I believe uh, my name is iron I'll be one of the hosts uh, for today with me are my other hosts head Bob and Tucker hello hello yep and our guest this uh, this month is Zypotic. welcome Zypotic. thank you thank you Hello, everyone. Yeah, glad to have you here. Um, so I, as always, we'll start off with, uh, we don't have too much in terms of community things going on. Obviously, the marathon is taking place um, right now. So make sure, um, you're, I'm assuming you're watching that, but because if you're, if you're watching our podcast today, but uh, hopefully uh, you're enjoying it so far. Uh, I don't think there's anything much else to really talk about. Uh, from the community side, I guess the Let's Go tournament just happened. Um, the finals was about a week ago, and we had T Pat winning the uh, tournament. So congratulations to T Pat on that. And in second place, we had Amber, and third place, Headstrong. So congrats to all three and everybody on a fantastic tournament, and uh, especially to our tech crew uh, who uh, ran the event. Uh, and everything went really well, and also the layouts and everything. Everything was just really good this year. I don't know if you guys have anything else to add yeah um yeah thank you guys to thank you to everyone who participated everyone who worked on the on the marathon and also i just want to say if you watching the stream right now missed any of the races that happened over the course of the last month or so uh they're all highlighted on the pokemon speedruns tv youtube if you uh if you want to go check them out uh in full yeah um, we'll so feel free yeah we'll try to have i think we might have a command for youtube so we'll we'll try to get that in chat um around this point <laughs> when we're, <laughs> we're playing we're playing the podcast um all right so yeah well I guess we'll just we'll, we'll jump right in um to our focus topic which is zypotic you had two um solid um i guess records in two two of the sword and shield categories let's start with um don't get urshifu yes definitely the more uh, consumable one, just based off of being able to watch it. Like I don't, I, I, I wouldn't blame anyone for not wanting to sit through the GST run. But yeah, so uh, there's in short, it's like uh, RNG was great, and then the what's being shown on screen now is the slow pokes, which is probably the only real difference from the previous runs that were towards the top of the leaderboard. Basically, you run into the first slowpoke right now before even grabbing the muddy water, which is not something that had been done in the past. And then it allows you to hit, go one, two, three in terms of the slowpokes you fight, rather than having to go fight the third one and the second one so that you can death warp to the Malmar. You can just death warp to an Aracuda or Barascuda in the water. It also helped that this uh, Drizelle was great and one shot the next two slow pokes okay yeah that's interesting because yeah normally you'd have muddy water here and you just one shot assuming you hit of course uh, but uh <clears throat> you can get a pretty easy two shot here with uh with water pulse water gun yeah my th my thought process on it was i yeah like normally you'd expect to like obviously you don't expect to have the special deck i have so like I was able to just completely skip the Muddy Water menu until I had to deposit the Bulbasaur. Oh, okay, but wow. On a normal run, I would just get to the spot in the grass up here on the right where uh, where I, I would stop here. I was yes, I was late, but normally I'd run a little further, stop at a point in the grass, and but right before the Slowpoke hits me, i open the menu and teach Muddy Water so that I'd have Muddy Water for this fight. However, it didn't really matter because this Drizzile is the GOAT. And yeah, just one shot the slow folks. Yeah, it's like it's just like pretty likely to like and I wouldn't say pretty likely, but it's like very not unreasonable for like 
Water Pulse to just like kill the Slowpokes if you have like decent enough special attack. Um, like you, you wouldn't expect it to, but then you're also comparing it to Muddy Water, which is 85% accurate, and you expect to miss at least one over the course of the run. So it's like it's just like weighing out the pros and cons. It's like yeah. it's about the same. Yeah, I'm really liking this movement. It's it looks really smooth in terms of getting up to all the slow pokes. It's so fast. So, this, yeah. this this all started because I looked at the like when I first started rerunning the category again. I like I mean I wanted to play it because I enjoy it. It's just like I mean it's short and it's like it's not like uh, get to Cali Rex or don't or get Urshifu RNG. So like, and then I was like, wow, I was doing the regular cycle and I was like, wow, this feels so slow. So I'm just, I just wanted to try to figure out something that was faster. And this is, this is what I came to. Uh, uh, the, at the very start though, I was doing, what I was doing is I was, uh, still going back and fighting the Malamar because I didn't, I didn't, I never thought about the Barracuda, but, or is it Aracuda or Barracuda? That looks like an Aracuda. It's this one's yeah, Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought, and then I corrected myself earlier because I wasn't too sure. Yeah, yeah I don't know. The fish, the uh, it clicks big water move and kills you. Yeah, really, whatever is there, because I think there can <laughs> also be like Corpus and stuff there. Then they're all like level forties or whatever. So. Yeah, or even Cramorant. But doesn't I really mean, matter. Yeah, they're all because they're in the they're in the water because they don't expect you to be able to fight them until you're the water bike. I guess being able to whistle like I just did and call it a call it over just isn't something that uh they expected to happen. I don't <laughs> maybe 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 they did intend for it to be able to happen. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think was it Ringo who who initially did the the the, the whistling? That sounds right. Yeah, I think Sp yeah, because Spider was telling me about it at GDQ. Yeah, it was something we discussed at GDQ in length. Um, about like how we wanted to formulate something like this because the waiting around is like pretty extensive in the other cycle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just have to stand there for so long. Even even just like the running, even just the running, it just like makes your brain feel better. It's like wow, I'm doing something instead of just standing still in a spot. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, the movement just looks so much more efficient. I've been meaning to come back to this for a while. <laughs> just so many other things that have distracted me from from returning. But I'll definitely give that a try once I once I get back in. Um, what was the um? Was it a plus special attack Sobble? Uh, I never looked at the IV, but I know it was fourteen at. Oh, it was fourteen at five, so it had to have been. Okay. It was four, yeah. Fourteen into right. fifteen, so it's like middle. It's like twenty to twenty-six, I think. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I mean that, and then level six Wulu, which is which gives you the fastest, uh, well, just like a fast hop two split in general. But also, like you can, you only have to kill kill a Pokemon after that. I I don't remember exactly what I killed. I think I killed uh, Rookie D. Oh, it was Rookie D? Yeah, we were talking about that actually. Yeah, because it, the notes have said like to kill a Squovit. Yeah, to kill a Squovit, but it. The, the even the lowest level Rookie D just like gives you enough experience. Like, and there's probably some cases where like it was like a level four Rookie D or something, and like your ESP just barely doesn't work out. But the incentive is that it typically just like dies to Water Pulse. Whereas yeah, that's really like, pretty unlikely too. Oh yeah, Water Gun, but or Water Gun, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but also Scovit can have like a it can have a berry and it can have Cheek Pouch, so it can eat the berry a second time, and it's. Oh. <laughs> it has it has the chance to go so wrong, which I didn't know until it happened, and then I'm like, wow, this actually sucks. I don't even think I changed in my notes. I'm so lazy about updating those. Maybe which I'll probably just have to publish for mostly for the pictures of the spots where to stand for the slowpoke cycle. I mean at least we have your your VOD as a reference, even if you That's true. Don't decide like, to I don't, Yeah, like ever I mean it's it's definitely a category where you could just transcribe things and be like, yep, just do this. Uh, I believe the table on what to do, how to get to level 12 before before the slowpoke catch is also public. At least Spider posted that at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least there, at the very least, there's a set of notes out there that showcases that. And this, um, and this involves getting two medium candies in the ground tundra, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I was just resetting for two candies. Yep. Or I believe I, I, early on I was uh, if I got medium small, then I would go check the other M spot and go check the XL candy spot, and then if I got the XL, I would pivot, which I did on my very first run where I actually fully tried it. Funny enough, and then that's my don't get PB now. It's just a pivoted, or that's my get getters for PB is a uh, a pivoted off of don't get. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. You can kind of pivot and switch if things go are more favorable for one of the two categories. Yeah, exactly. It's just not, it's just nice being able to like having that as the access to play don't or get Urshifu because I I don't think I have the patience to just grind it on its own. Oh yeah, <laughs> that XL candy is. Uh... That would it would require quite the warrior. Yeah, playing for a 120 from a 121 doesn't exactly sound all that fun. Yeah, I'm perfectly happy with leaving my PB as is. <laughs> yeah. So, anything else notable in this run? We can kind of uh, shift ahead in the in the vid in the video if you uh, if you think of something. Uh, I mean, basically the only other thing to note is tower went actually perfectly. I did get poisoned on Clara 3, but that's like, whatever. That's one of that the things where it's like, yeah, that just, that does happen half the time. Oh yeah, you can see that. Part of that time save, I guess, from the slow pokes, you can see there in that, in that Clara 2 split. Yeah, the massive 25 second save over my PP. Uh, I believe I did have a run, so the gold wasn't actually that large. I or I had a run that was similar, like did the did the cycle, but died to Malamar. So the gold saved like well, another five seconds, I think, over uh, over the other. Oh yeah, and this killed too. Yep, it's like it was, a it's like a range. Oh yeah, I crit it, but it was a range. Uh, and skipped the sucker punch, which is really good because the sucker punch often puts you in really awkward HP. For, for what? Crock Rock? No, for Scraggy too. Because if your defense is too low, you can just die to revenge. And I think this. I think I was minus defense. However, it was fine because you didn't get sucker punch. I, yeah, I didn't get sucker punch. I might have had to heal there, which would have been pretty annoying. So I, especially since that would put my healing pretty low, in case I needed to heal higher for other things. Or payback, not revenge. Same but then type it, move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that two shot went without a hitch. In comes the MK. And then one shot that as well. I believe this is also a muddy water, so that's terrifying. It might be a water. Because I had really good back. I don't actually remember. I think it's typically muddy water. It's definitely um... nor it's definitely normal. But yeah, but hit most importantly, and also killed. I think the scariest part of this whole run is the fact that like literally the last thing you do <laughs> very, is just the very last to kill you. Yeah, like, <laughs> very scary. Oh, and also most importantly, got the, or not most important, but got the protect skip on the Crocker Rock. Which I feel like oh, doesn't wow. happen. Which I feel like yeah. doesn't happen a lot, and but it's very odd how I believe it's happened to both my don't get and get Archivo PBs, which I find is I think is very funny. Then of course mustard, uh, what we could call probably a nightmare. I've actually never died to it, and I'm very glad that that that's the case, <laughs> because it's definitely scary just being able to. Well, one you could just get a. Uh, you can get focus energy, and then you're like, what the hell do I do? Yeah. Yeah, I've never had, like, a, a good run die, but, like, definitely just, like, feels bad to have, like, any sort of run. Just, like, come here, and then, you know, you're, like, 30 seconds away from finishing the run, and you just, like, miss a muddy water and die, or just, yeah, don't get torrent and die. 
Yeah, I think there's I think there's also a funny thing that I thought of that you can do on mustard where you risk you heal out of death range from brick break so that it'll it will use uh focus energy and then you skip picking up the rocky helmet so you'd have to know like know your run is bad earlier than that and then so you skip picking up the rocky helmet so you don't have to equip it for this fight you heal above the range that where you would die or like where it's even close so that you would get uh focus energy turn one and then you just go water pulse water pulse water pulse or water pulse muddy water depending on your special deck because you should just get hit in the torrent and being slower doesn't really matter because it's the second turn, you just need to risk the 50-50 crit. I did try that once, and it worked the only time I tried it, so I found that funny. And yeah, uh, DST. The Zapdos yeah. was, uh, not fun. I believe I missed it once. I skipped that part. Okay, cool. Well, <laughs> okay. You don't know I missed it once, but I missed it once. And then this catch uh, takes uh, quite a bit of time. Yeah, if you don't know anything about uh, Galarian Star Tournament in the category, it's very much like a RNG L fest, basically. <laughs> um, it's effectively just the any percent run plus the post game and both DLCs, and all of that plus catching. How many legendaries is it? It's like eight a or lot. nine. It's what. Four Reggies, Zacian, three birds, and Calyrex, I guess. Yeah, so like that's, seven or eight. That's something. a nine, yeah. Some, some, something like that. Um, Fortunately, you do get two Master Balls, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, it's like you're going for like, what, 10% catches sometimes? Like, I don't know, like stupidly, yeah. stupidly low catches, like as you see, like, six hours into the run. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so you can just, like, lose or save, like, a lot of time just just based off those, even if your any percent portion was good. Yeah. Leading up to this, the vast majority of the catches, I believe, were average. Uh, also, you also have to catch a Cryogonal, which is not a fun catch either. Yeah. And another funny thing about this Zapdos fight is my Suicune, when it used Liquidation, defense dropped, so it triggered Defiant for the Zapdos, so all my stuff is just dying, because that's a, that's a what, plus two focus energy Zapdos or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All while it's not getting in. I believe this is, this is like one of the more likely catches, the red bar, the birds and red bar are like the most likely of the catches that you can well outside of Zation, of course yeah Zation is a different issue though because that thing just uses sword stance repeatedly and then all your stuff just dies immediately and it's probably better to just reset at that point mm -hmm. this run i mean there's definitely some like like i think the enter percent section went pretty fine i flew to the wrong place a couple times and then got, like on one split i like had like a two minute tilt basically it was not great but uh, when you're playing for seven hours, that's the type of thing that's just going to happen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're effectively going mentally insane just by running it in the first place. So true. Which puts even more, uh, even gives even more credit to Pierzo, who just continues to do great runs of this category, who beat me a couple days after I finished this run. I suppose I just gave him the motivation to play the category again. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get to that run in a little bit. But yeah, that was his. Their run was the first sub seven. So, yeah, in English. Oh yeah, I guess Japanese is already in English in sub seven. Sub seven, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very yeah. very fun category. Recommend have you done? Everyone. Have you done it, Head Bob? Uh yeah. Um, like. Uh, I think earlier this summer, me, Truly, and Zygmatic yeah, we were doing some races of it. Oh, okay, okay. To make it tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Truly is a 7.05, Headbub is a 7.13. From the races, it was in early May. I believe, okay. I believe I got a run that was like, that was like, that like, didn't PV by like three seconds or something. <laughs> Which is so funny uh, for a seven hour run. And then, of course, this was quite the opposite. 
Yeah. I remember at this moment I was like, ah, oh, it's so over. <laughs> it felt it felt so good with the just like it, all the catches before him, they were just like average, but average is just like so fine. And it also like is like it it weighs less on your mental because when it's not when it's like when it's like way above average and way below average, you're just like mental is just swinging up and down and you're going crazy. But with that, you're just like feeling okay. I believe this is the ball we've been. Yeah, like this is your last Pokemon too, so. <laughs> oh no, not this one. I was about yeah. to say, I don't know how you've been like counting this long. That would have been. No, crazy. I'm not counting. I just remember. <laughs> I, I just remembered the time. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It was fifty something. So, behind record. So yeah, this is the ball. <laughs> um. But yeah, it's funny how then that that catch segues into speaking of the just like the roller coaster of catches going well and poorly. Uh, immediately go for Moltres right after this so i mean you're th this is the and moltres is the final catch of the run so at that point it's like uh, i need like literally perfect uh basically a perfect because like also the the manner in which you encounter all three of them is kind of a pain they all have like their little gimmick moltres just flies really fast around the region uh zapdos just runs in a massive a very fast in a massive circle around the wild area so that's why you need to fly in and boost right into it it's because it gives you by far the best chance to get hit it and also it's just the fastest yeah and then articuno's got its little game or whatever that you have to find like a the real one and then it chases you down after you do that yeah oftentimes like, oh. oftentimes they're also all very finicky on how they spawn Zapdos is the consistent one where if you do it like if you enter the wild area for the first time after triggering the birds to go around the first time, there uh it's just much it's always in that spot. And then you just have to boost appropriately into it. Which is like a little a little off to the right you have to go. Because if you go straight, you just boost right behind it and then you're sad. I, I just decided to start saving and resetting for that because it's just so bad. If you don't get it, if you if you if you don't save, you have to like bike around like actually the entire wild. Area. But yeah, I got probably the best Moltres spawn I've ever seen. It's like right outside of the dojo, and then it it locks onto me right away. So I can just, you can just keep biking along, much like Articuno. Like after you aggro it, you can just bike away, and then it'll. It'll just encounter you at some point, some probably set time after, some set time after you aggro it. it it's funny because the animation is like super funny because it just like, if you watch it, it just like flies at a blur and it'll yeah. run into you. Yeah, so if he, if he hadn't seen Moltres immediately here, he would have to just like keep flying, stay like, flying to the same spot over and over again until it spawned at a spot that actually would chase him down when he started biking away. Which is kind of a pain sometimes. I also didn't do the strat that I was normally doing, that's why I hesitate here, because I don't know what to do. Because normal, normally, I forget what I do normally, it's like charge beam, charge beam, heavy slam, something like that. Instead I went heavy slam, heavy slam, so I was like, but then I was like, ah, oh, flash cannon, I guess. And then... In a very helpful manner, the Moltres oh. just, just, <laughs> get, just gets him just like a ball. Minor, minor gold. But yeah, that's just showing the, the ups and downs. Like all the other catches weren't interesting; they were just like all about expected. And then the Moltres, Zapdos went about as bad as possibly could have. The Moltres went about about as well. The only thing that could have gone better is it could have gotten gotten in, actually, the first ball. And then I believe everything after this just went fine. So it's, it's not like a very interesting end. You just you do a little fetch quest. You go fight a massive I mean, queen. I mean, the GST is like pretty volatile because like random things can like Dynamax or not depending on how the turns go. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I mean, the big issue is you can like die to the Triathar, which would be an issue. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even that, you lose, like, 20 seconds. Like, the variance between the best and the worst cycles, it's like, it's not too bad. Yeah, so how it works is, like, the Glorian Star Tournament, they battle in doubles, and so, as a result, the, the power to Dynamax gets alternated between the two trainers that you're fighting every single turn. And so, ideally, you want to finish the fight on a turn where the Pokemon that's left, like the last Pokemon on the team, uh, isn't of the trainer that has the power to Dynamax that turn. Or else it will Dynamax and lose a lot of time. So yeah, it's like it's like it's kind of a balancing act sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, the big thing is definitely that the two the, there's a Tyranitar, which is a range. Not exactly what you want to see when something that's four times effective against you is range. Um but generally after like if you die if you die to the Tyranitar, your Zation can just like one shot the Dynamax Pokemon with a Behemoth Blade. Also sometimes the double just kills the Titar, which I believe happens in this run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this. Oh my god, this is so annoying. <laughs> You can like technically bike here, but then like the hitbox on Lilligan is like super finicky, and like if it gets stuck behind a wall and you don't realize it, then you lose a lot of time. Yeah, basically it's the like safest way to do it is it's just get off the bike and run because the the chance that it gets stuck behind you is really low. Also, the Reggie being there is really annoying because something you just can't see the Lilligan. <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's much else to say. I mean, the run's like good enough. I'm sad it's in sub seven, but I think it's good enough to make me not want to run the game, run the category again too much. At least on my own. Like the the category is definitely fun in like a race setting, but very much less so when it's just just you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well. Thank you very much, uh, Zapotic, for sharing your runs and, and with us today. Um, we're gonna—I think—we're just gonna jump right into the noted runs. And uh, feel free to stick around if you, uh, unless you need to go. All right. I mean, thanks for having me. I'm gonna hop out, but it was fun being here, and I'm, and I'm glad I could. Uh, well, I guess watch this encounters. <laughs> <laughs> fun time. Have fun with the rest of the podcast. All right. Take care. Take care. Thank you for coming on. Okay. So, in terms of our noted runs for uh, this these past months, quite a bit on the Gen 1 to 3 side of things. We got a couple of very solid runs that I read any percent glitchless. Uh, first, Kink My Boot with uh, second place. In fact, both runs are sec hot tied for second place. Yujito uh, and Kink My Boot. This is Kink My Boot's run. Um, I'm not sure if there was any headway in terms of timing top runs with the milliseconds. I think that was something that was discussed uh, in the Discord. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but it might happen in the future. Um, because as you can see, there is a tie for second place in a very, very uh, competitive category. Yeah, and I believe Yuji is the one who actually has like the faster run by like... like what the hell? Second. That's crazy. He just got so far off Pidgeot. I didn't even see that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so that that uh, millisecond tiebreaker may or may not happen. We'll see where that goes. But for now, both of these runners, uh, Kink and Yuji Toe, have a uh, one forty four fifty three. And it kind of feels like, like, it was only, like, when Sinead got his 144 that runners that weren't named Pokey Guy were able to start getting 144s, so, yeah. Okay, I was wondering if there was another runner with a 144. I guess there's yeah, three, four it was of them now. Yeah, just for Sinead. Mm hmm Yeah. Who has a 54. So. Oh. <laughs> and Wave's currently running red, so we may see a fifth one sometime in the future.
Yeah, it's good to see. I guess I know Poke Guy's run is considered one of the better, one of the best PSR runs, certainly. For sure. Um, so For it's sure. it's great to see people still running oh it. And we might God. see we might see some improvements. Who knows? Yeah, so we're uh, we're showing here uh, Sylph Bar, which is like one of the uh, the riskiest tricks in the current red eighty percent glitchless speed speed run. Um, pretty much all top runs will go for it. Um, basically, involves you stalling to get red bar, which is like a thing that saves a lot of time in Gen One for the entirety of the Koga split. And it's like super risky. It's only about like forty-ish percent to actually go well um, on any given run. Um, and <laughs> King Boot actually gets there in quite a strange way this run, as we've seen a couple of the things. He, you're not, you're supposed, you're supposed to just stall on Pidgeot and then take a Hydro Pump from Sylph Rivals Gyarados to get into Red Bar, but he just takes enough damage that he just like gets Red Bar. And then on the last fight, he got Bone Club Miss, which would have killed him if it hit. And on this fight, he gets Horn Attack back into Red Bar for the rest of the gym. So very weird way of going about it. Um, obviously, everything in this game has like random AI, so you kind of just have to not play around things that can kill you. Just hope you get the good outcomes. So you pretty um, much wasted like no turns getting so far here. Yeah, this is like one of the best Koga splits that's ever been seen. It's 13-19. Uh, so yeah, it's like wow. the, com the community gold is like a, I don't know, close to like 15 probably. But it's like, it's like definitely the better end of Sylph Bar. It's a very wide spectrum of whether it saves or loses time, depending on how the fights go. Like, for example, the next run, Yujido, um, loses red bar for a long period of time um <laughs> it's not it's not showing it but like i i just found it funny to compare these two runs because they're the, they're the exact same time and um yujito pretty much gets like one of the worst so far as you can get it's like almost a 14 minute koga split because he loses red bar for pretty much all of koga's gym um so it doesn't actually save that much time um, here, here, here is, I, I showcased a different part where he just gets red bar off of Bridge Rival, which is another anomaly, and ends up saving him a lot of time over the course of the split, despite the fact that he missed like three Mega Punches on that fight. So yeah, um, yeah, the top end, top end red runs are are very crazy to watch. I think because there's a lot of it's very optimized, so you kind of just have to bite the bullet and just get good RNG in some places. Because the level of the level of play from these runners is like very good at this point. Yeah, and I believe Yuji was kinda in for a long grind, but he kinda got this on like a D rest, so Yeah, it pretty much yeah, pretty much happened instantly. Yeah. I mean both both Kink by Boot and Yujido have been running glitchless for like a very long time. Obviously you see here Yujito's 12,000 attempts. Um, he's been doing this category for years and still hasn't gotten the time he wanted, but I think this is probably going to be it. At least for the, the, you know, foreseeable future. I think that's like the time he wanted. Bridge and Champ are the splits you're gonna to want to watch. Let's let's go to Champ. I wonder if something insane happens, like like wing attack Gen One miss or something. This fight's also pretty scary because, again, like Silk Bar, you only can die to like. It it depends on your HP, but wing attack is the only attacking move that Pidgeotto has that can attack in one turn and also a sky attack. But she gets sky attack, which is kind of a little weird. Um, but yeah, like in his position, he would have tanked a wing attack, so he either would have needed. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> oh that is not what you normally do. Oh, my goodness. Or that's like that might be like a pro byproduct of the uh, the one four five route is that you skip the candy and mansion, which means that you, if you get sky attack, you kind of have to yolo like he just did. Alakazam is 
three moves that he can use, and Reflect is the only one that doesn't kill you. So, <laughs> very, again, very scary stuff at top level red runs. That's crazy. But yeah, um, yeah, typically if you, you would, um, if you would get the Mansion Candy, which like pretty much all runners do and that aren't actively going for crazy times like these guys are, um, is if you get Sky Attack, you blizzard the the Pidgeot, and then you can just like kill the Alakazam, and then set up your X accuracy on Rhydon, which is again only one in four to kill you. So it's like fairly safe. And yeah, that's one forty four is like an incredible accomplishment. I, I couldn't even like it's crazy that we have two two new one four fours in the same month. Or same yeah. month and a half, or whatever it is. It's like actually crazy to me. <laughs> these guys are, these guys are insane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I can't believe there's so many 144s now. Yep, for sure. Congrats to both these guys. We're sure we'll see more, more 144s soon. Um. All right, we'll move. We'll switch over to Gen Two, and I, we don't see Gen Two that often. Although Huang Bro has been running uh, Gen Two, we don't have a, a timestamp here. Uh, hits Ernest. Where's Ernest? Is he in the tower? Yeah, it's in the tower. So that's yeah. a little bit before. Uh, Ernest is a the spinner that you pass like twice. There he is. Um, I think that's Ernest. Well, that's that's the tower, so it should be nearby. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit more. But yeah, um, playing it, it's it's pretty hard to get a spinner list run in crystal, so playing hits uh it's one of them, and um, kind of takes the blow. But uh, otherwise, pretty solid run to Raikou and then to Raikou. I guess like the only the only spots where like it's bad is um he gets like two heals on Karen because he wasn't below half I believe that's how that fight works and pretty much um, yeah uh he also gets a kind of a rare protect on Brock's on the star I, th I think he said like it's a two percent <laughs> to happen yeah oh. that's right yeah so yeah not not much that can go wrong when you have Raikou but that is what what happens yeah the difference in the amount of notable fights between uh the start of the game and Raikou and then Raikou to end. Basically, the only like actual fights that can like kill you once you get or I, I can't I can't even say that the only things that can like lose a significant time once you get Raikou are are spinners. Um and and Karen Karen also is kind of a kind of a menace. Yeah. I guess sir, he's a, a little, what happened a little bit. A little bit ahead, I think. Although it may not even be this visit to the tower. Yeah, he, there are two passes for Ernest. Yeah, here he is. I think it was the first one. Yeah, yeah there okay. it is. Yeah, at, at least if you hit it on the first one, you can just like go on the second one. So that's a little slight silver lining, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's like a stupid amount of spinner passes and, and crystal compared to gold and so getting a spinnerless run of of crystal is really quite the accomplishment yeah and so like in this game like unlike gen 3 the spinners are not guaranteed yeah uh, to pass as well the mechanics are different so i think like at best it's like a 93 percent that's about right yeah just yeah. based on it's basically just like you want to get them in a good direction and you want to pause at a time when they've just spun to give yourself the best chance of them not spinning towards you. But like, there's never going to be a guaranteed spinner pass unless they're stuck. <laughs> oh yeah, that can happen. Yeah. I did look ahead and he does get a clean surge. So. Oh, doesn't he get, um... He gets like I think... Para, para on Electa Buzz. No, no, no. I think like his Heidi pass. Like he gets, or no, Tom maybe. Like it gets like stuck in one direction oh, yeah. and skips yeah. like 
two or three passes. Three passes. Um, yeah. On route eight before Lavender. It's like oh probably God, that. <laughs> is it before surge or after? Uh. Oh. Uh. Well, there's there's Heidi once. I don't know. You you go to the power plant multiple times. <laughs> there 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 it is there it is. That's that's Tom. Oh, yeah, he was he was stuck up. We just passed it. Easily, the the best luck you can get. On it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saves a massive amount of time. Yeah. Had he had gotten stuck in like any other direction, it would have been a huge time sink. Yep. So this is uh, this is third place in crystal. So sub three ten. I believe yep. he's still he's still going. He's still so. going, okay. So look forward to potentially seeing brighter and better things from him in the future. Yeah. And uh he's also like kinda looking at like some alternate strats on a few fights here and there. Like one of the things that he was uh looking at was um getting a berry and then using it or equipping it for Whitney on good runs and um maybe even potentially like uh guard spec karen so yeah just a few things that might change small yesterday things. he was talking about um getting a super repel for uh lake of rage encounters as well apparently loses like a tenth of a second on average but prevents you from getting you know like like a rage encounters ever yeah so yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's just exploring. A lot of these strats are like kind of like mid ground strategies. So kind yeah, of like ones that prevent the extreme bad luck from happening for slight uh, cost of time. Okay, we'll we'll look forward to that hopefully in the future from Wangro. Uh, we're going to cover a couple runs from Gen 3. First of all, we have uh, Gunner getting second place in Sapphire, the 157.17. Um, as far as I know, Gunner's been playing this for quite a, a little while since he got, uh, well, spoiler alert, what was <laughs> the Fireleaf Green E4 Round 2 record. <laughs> and uh, gets a good time here. I forget what happens on this run. Um, yeah, I think I noticed he lost like some track Kyogre or something. I noticed he lost some time on with the one on a split, so I highlighted it here. I guess he missed, but a couple times. Let's see here. Yeah, I mean the split's incredibly volatile because it has a lot of execution. The the Winona fight itself can be kind of a doozy. Um, depending on which strat you decide to go for, there's two different possible fights. Um. Yeah, like a lot of just random fights so you can lose time as well. There's like not really a split in this game that you're like just like chilling, really. <laughs> yeah, it's all kind of. It's very much like a <laughs> clenching game. You're just kind of hoping you don't get bad RNG everywhere. And obviously you're on the mock bike, so everything's super hard. Yeah, I think like pound for pound, one of the least forgiving runs in PSR. Saf glitchless. Yeah, it seems like um seems like he just like loses pace overall. Um next next split uh wave gets a very, very good Tate and Liza split. Um, and Gunner just doesn't match it, obviously, because it's, like, really, really hard to match. Um, and so I think he just, like, doesn't have the pace to record and just, you know, just takes the PB, which I think ties second place, so... Yeah, tied with Shira for second. Oh, okay. So it's not all bad. Looking forward to better thing, you know. I mean, obviously, this is, like, a very, you know, good run, but Gunner is very capable of taking the record and would not be surprised to see that sometimes soon in the future. 
So he is still running it? Yes. Okay. At least for the, the time being. Yeah, for sure. It's been good. It's good to it's been good to see Gunner back at it. He's had a bit of a hiatus in the last few couple of years, but it seems like he's doing well. IRL, yeah. and he's been able to come back and uh, put up good times in a couple categories. So looking forward to seeing more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we will s now switch. I kind of alluded to it before. This is um, Poka Guy, who <laughs> is still. Um, putting up amazing times and now has the I think he has retaken the fire red round two record I think he had it before at one point yes if I'm not mistaken yeah so this is a small improvement by 18 seconds uh and you can see uh his his delta here on record is much better than that uh, we'll we'll see here things don't go so well on Bruno too yeah, this is like an incredibly awkward position because he's out of fire blast and has to elixir, but also he's slower than a couple things on this fight, and so he has to make like a very well. I, I think he didn't. He, he chooses to elixir, and then I think he dies without thinking he was actually gonna die. Like he, I don't think he just. I just don't think he thought he was. This is gonna kill him. Um, but it ended up it ended up being like fine because obviously he gets rid of the speed drop and can just like sweep the rest of the fight. And doesn't have to heal after this fight. So it ended up being, like, not the worst death, but, I mean, yeah, it definitely lost him, like, a good 20, 30 seconds at least. Um, this this round was, like, that, coming out of Elite Four round one definitely had, like, 325 potential. It's, like, a really, really good run. Yeah, the best ever start of round one, so... Which is like two thirty seven. Oh, two thirty seven. Mm -hmm. It's really I didn't solid. How badly you need to like hit that fire blast. Yeah, I think he also missed one on um. Well, you have you have to hit four and you have five. So you can afford to miss one without having too many problems. Yeah, because you have to hit um, Jin Jinx as well on Lorelai, I believe. Jinx and Pylos one. Oh yeah, Lorelei. there's two there. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I think his position was like the worst because you just don't see Rock Team there really. Um, I've never seen it before. So yeah, it just, it just put him in a very weird spot. So overall, it's like a pretty consistent section with Mewtwo, but like um, definitely some fights can can go awry. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, at the at the point where like after Rocket Warehouse, like a minute forty ahead of record, like oh, I think he also got um mm -hmm. I think he got two encounters. encounters as well. Yeah. Yes, really in cave is pretty it's pretty unforgiving. You're very likely to get encounters and somewhat likely to get ones you can't run away from. Could even like kill you sometimes. It's just like yeah, need the. the Post pe people, I, there's definitely some people that think that after you get your sixty Pokemon and get get into E4 round one, the run is kind of locked in. But by far, not the case. Some of the worst stuff in the run is is after that point. And some like blizzards that you have to hit. In yeah, warehouse can be kind of crummy as well. <laughs> yeah, not fun. But yeah, I think I think Gunner said he would return um to beat this run. I don't think he's looking to do it in the immediate. As I said, I think he's gonna keep doing Sapphire for a little bit longer. But he does have intents to, to beat this run sometime in the future. Yeah, and I think if this run does get beaten, then Poogie will also come back. Yes. He's he's currently planning on being done for right now. Mm -hmm. He wants to do um, Emerald next, I think. So that's also exciting. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll move on from that. Congrats again to Pokeguy. 
Uh, we'll do, we have one run from the DS side of things, and that is another record from Worcester. This time, yep. Polk Platinum Any Percent. Yeah, I got one run from DS. That happened pretty soon after the last podcast, but um, it's a 235 flat from Worcester. Um, this is the... It's using the solo gold look with the teleport route. It's like slightly faster than the fly route. Um, highlighted here is a pretty bad um, forest double. Um, it's it's kind of made worse by um, you know having less exp now on gym chart because you do uh, rock minute, but. Yeah, um, honestly, this run doesn't really have anything outstanding, bad, or good. Um, this is probably the worst part, um, RNG-wise, and uh, a couple of the tweaks could get, could have been better. Um, but, yeah, I mean, once you get... Honestly, both, both of the mains that you use in this run are kind of, like, smooth sailing. Both uh, Jim Char and Golduck. So, yeah, any percent's kind of in a state where it's like kind of boring. It's kind of just more execution at this point. So, yeah. Um, I feel like after the uh, amount of route changes we've had to any percent over the past like six months, I think it deserves a break. <laughs> yeah, it's also a little disappointing. This category used to be, you know, a lot more exciting, but, you know. I I understand why this round is uh the best that we have. Um, <laughs> as for what the competition looks like right now, um, Dexy is still doing platinum any percent. Uh, he has since then switched over to the teleport route. So, um, considering that this run isn't that outstanding, I do feel like Dexy would uh be the next one to get a record, and it will be a two thirty four. So, um, yeah, Worcester has since moved on. He has he had like a marathon run to do. Um, he did like a few bounty runs. So, um, I f I don't know if he's gonna return to this before uh a Dexy record, but you know it, it could happen. I do feel like he did say that one time, but I don't remember if I heard that correctly. But yeah, uh, the route. Seems to be settled, but the the record seems to be up for grabs still. All right, we'll move on to 3DS. We've got a couple runs from uh, one of our hosts here, Head Bob. Omega Ruby, any percent? That was the run. Hello. Um. Yeah, this is my run. Uh, it's like. It's like pretty good. Um yeah, I had a very like very, very good and like early game. Um and then I lost I mean it was basically just like two major points of contention. Um I had a like fifty one twenty Watson is I think the second best Watson ever done. Um very, very like insane time. And then I had one of the worst meteor fall splits I've ever had. And I got an encounter and then had a really, really bad fight. And then, so I, th I thought like, I mean, it was like back to like pretty much like a normal run, like maybe even like below average. And then I had this Norman gym, which you just saw the last fight. I got fury swipes missed, so I didn't have to heal for this fight, uh, which is like super fast. Um, and then, um, and then here on Zangus, I, uh, I crit one of the bulldozers so I don't have to heal again. Um, so I, I gold I gold Norman by like 10 seconds, basically. Which is already like a super volatile split, and you expect to get like a 7 0 or even worse than that. But instead, I just like save 30 seconds. So I just like completely saves the pace and puts it back on like really, really good pace. And then from there, it's pretty much just like like average most things. All things considered. Yeah. Um it's I think this is like the only thirty Raleigh ever. Yeah, it's like it's like a little bit fake because like um 
for all these splits typically you either have the super repel from the beach or you don't um it's like a 16 second um grab you go to like a different route pick up super repel and come back um for my mega ruby grind i was i was waiting until after brawly to get it pretty much always because i would consider skipping it if i didn't did not have to menu otherwise um so i think the previous best brawly did have super repel it was like a 31 like 10 or something by pokey guy there's some something like that so it's it, this is like around that level yeah, of even. good um I, I i lose the time accordingly on on the rival two split so it basically evens out but yeah just like a very good run i don't know I, there's not much else to say i think um I knew this. I, I had come up with a optimization for Alpha Sapphire that saved like twenty seconds or so, um, but was like a decent amount riskier. But I was like, even with that, I was still convinced that my Omega Ruby PV was like worse. <laughs> yeah, just because. I, like out of just all because the like six records that you had, like this was like the first one that you got. Yeah, I got my two fifty three oh five. Um, nearly it would be like two and a half years ago at this point so i definitely have gotten a lot better at 3ds games since then and so i was just like convinced that my level of play was just not there at that point and that i could just like beat this run uh reasonably um it still requires like or actually requires like a a lot of luck to get like a a decent time and so there's like a lot of good luck here that i'm not i'm not highlighting just because that's just what you need to get a, a time like this. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's just how it is. It's just like a good, lucky run that I played okay at. This is kind of unfortunate. I missed Torrent by 1 HP. Had to heal. Right. Are you trying to, like, uh, just, just surf the next fight? <laughs> yeah. I think it came down to this. Up, up. Yeah, if you got a plus two. <laughs> or, no, no. No. No, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess you were kind of, like, prepared to do, like, um, overheat skip if your run was, like, sort of, like... Yes, so... Never. Yeah, th that's another strat that we, like, kind of theorycrafted sometime after I got my 253.05. And involves just like not teaching overheat at all and using um precipice blades, which is like a 120 power stab ground move that's 85% accurate. And just like using that throughout Victory Road and Elite Four a lot more. Um and that makes for like a much faster Victory Road, potentially a much faster Phoebe. Um, but it's just like much less consistent than overheat. As crazy as that as that sounds. Um and so I just I just had the pace at that point to not need to do it, but I think if if I decide to run this game in the future, or if anyone else decides to run for like two five two, I think overheat skip is like a very reasonable option. I think to to keep pace, it it saves probably like fifteen twenty seconds if you get good fights. So yeah, yep. Not much else to say here. I think. And here is my Oras Elite Four round two record, which I set like probably a little bit before any percent. Um, this was like a okay run. Obviously, it's not as good as my two fifty two oh nine, just because it's like a longer run. There's more things that can happen. Um, although most of it was actually concentrated in like small sections. Like this is this frost last is like by far one of the worst things that happened to this run. I lose like a ridiculous amount of time to confusion hit selves. Um, just because I was a person very short. Didn't I didn't pick up the um the person bush that I, I could have um before Mount Pyre and it really bit me in the butt. I miss. <laughs> That miss is actually really bad because now sun's off, which I didn't know this at the time. But sun's off, and now overheat doesn't kill. So, 
Yeah. Yeah, just wow. lose like an insane amount of time. Oh my god. Yeah, so it was basically just like, it, it was like a really good run, honestly. Considering there's like a lot of extra things that you have to get in the any percent portion of round two. Like you have to get a quick ball, you have to get some like escape ropes, you have to buy the metronome. Um, you have to get some extra money items. It's just like a lot of extra stuff that makes the any percent portion of round two not quite comparable to the any percent portion of the any percent run. Um, but this run is like it's like it's like three minutes behind TNL, three mi three minutes behind my two fifty two at TNL, which is like really good. Um, and then pretty much after this point, I get like. A pretty close to perfect end game, aside from the fact that Rayquaza breaks out once, which is like kind of expected. Um, so yeah, I mean this run is definitely it's like definitely beatable, but um, it's it's just like the fact that Rayquaza exists so far into the run makes me not it, it doesn't feel like a very grindable category with just like a forty percent just laced in four hours into the run. Yeah. 40% in, like, what, 45 seconds? Yeah, 45 seconds-ish for every breakout. This doesn't feel very mm -hmm. good way to use use your time, I think. Um, so I, I, was, I was glad to get this run. I was kind of kind of not loving it so much. But yeah, I think, that's, I think that's about it. All right. We have a couple GST runs. We, well, we obviously saw a Zypotix run earlier. This is the new English record uh, by Pierjo with a 6.56.05. Uh, the notes say good all round catches. Yeah, pretty much just like, I don't know, like five ish balls on average for each catch, which is like pretty good for GST. This one you'll see here is his first ball. Um, so that's like really, really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, just like we've talked about this before, Galarian Star Tournament is just very much like a volatile category. If you don't get a Pokemon in whatever reasonable amount of balls, like if you're spending 10 plus turns throwing balls and it's just not getting in, you're losing like minutes. Just, it's just like not good. Yeah. Um, so for Pierjo to pull out such a big record like this is like, very, very impressive. And then we have Corolio getting the Japanese record, 640 with a 643.52. Don't know too much about this one, I don't think. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> no I'm not too knowledgeable on it either. Um. Yeah, I mean, obviously Japanese is like quite a bit faster. The tech saves quite a bit of time, especially over the course of this run. Um, I know Corolio and Ikurjo have run this category a decent amount to a certain extent. Um, and so I think I, 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 I would even wager that their times are already better than the English record. Just because of, I don't know, I, I, it feels like they've put more both of them, Corolio and Eperja, put more effort into JPN than English Galarian Star Tournament. So I, I, I imagine this run is quite good. Yep. All right. Congrats to both of them on their uh, GST runs. I know we, we're not going to spend too much time here. We already spoke quite a bit <laughs> with Zypotic, so we'll move on to... Uh, we have a couple of Legends Arceus runs to sh talk about. Um, this is the this run actually came bef after the, the the one we're going to talk about next. So Halkiri retaking the record, he actually had, I believe, Kitamura beat Halkiri, and then Halkiri came back and took the record back with the three thirty six. Yeah. I'm not sure if I've highlighted the right spot, but he said he Haunter missed hypnosis on Dialga. Yes, yes, yes. You'll see in a second. Okay. <laughs> this this really this this loses like a lot of time. Um, 
I think also the fact I think it does break out of a ball after he misses hypnosis as well. I think he loses probably like at least four, I think this would have been three thirty five honestly if he just hit hypnosis. It loses like a lot of time. Wait, I guess because Dialga gets to attack and all that, and then he's gonna throw a ball and it's gonna break out. Yeah, Dialga's like sneakily one of the worst parts of the PLA end game because if you're if you're behind record, you kind of just have to go for it. You like you can't really like, afford to whittle it down and then throw balls at it for like a higher catch rate. You kind of just have to. I'm not sure whether you Yola ball, but you definitely like don't do as much setup as you would do here. Um, and so yeah, like pretty much after this, it's like smooth sailing. You can get trolled on one of the fights, but it's like very much not that big of an issue most of the time. Yep, we also see that Benny wasn't very nice. I don't remember where Benny is. I haven't played this game in a while. I think Benny is... Is he a game Before Dialga? Oh, before Dialga. I think you might be right. It's in like a cave. It's in like a cave. Yeah, this fight. That fight. I don't know much about the uh, PLA in game all that much. I just know, you know, Dialga is like a important thing, and there's the uh, the Palkia boss battle, which is like pretty easy if you know what you're doing. So yeah, it's just like kind of the end game fights that kind of stand in your way, plus Dialga. I believe, um, because I mean, uh, Kitamura has definitely pushed Halk to be like, you know, put up more competitive times. Because before that, no one in the English community really stood a chance against Halk, to be quite honest. And so Kitamura introduced some new, some new strats that have uh, saved like a large portion of time. Like I, I remember hearing that um, neither of them get Pachirisu anymore. Which Pachirisu is in like kind of like an isolated spot that requires you to like go basically to an entire part of the map just to catch Pachirisus. And so they just don't do that anymore. So that's like quite a big time save. As well as like, I think Halk was saying that he realized he was just like catching a lot of things just like without realizing it. It was like he would just, he would just like throw balls at things like randomly and that just like really added up, I think. Hmm. So yeah, this, this is like two minutes ahead of where the record was like last month, basically. <laughs> they they both both of them have really pushed down the record quite a lot. Wow. Yeah, it's kind of good to see more people running this at the top level. Uh, we had a few people that have ran like gotten times in like the top five, but like Halk is, and I guess Shady to some extent as well. And Kitamura and now are kind of on another level. Mm -hmm. So definitely. Yeah, we have one more to talk about. This was this is the new well, this was the record. This is Kitamura's run. Um yeah. I don't I have no idea like he lost some time on this split and I've just highlighted the electrode battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, I think like I said, um it's pretty much just like it's really hard to say with PLA because um, there's just a lot that goes into it like so much more than meets the eye and like if you're not actively running the game then it's hard to even like understand like some of the things that they do to save time <laughs> it's a very different speed run than other Pokemon games um, and so I, I couldn't even like really describe it because I don't even really know what I'm talking about all that much um but yeah like 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 i said they're just like catching less things passively um skipping pachirisu and just like being more methodical about the way they approach pokemon i think so yeah 
I mean, it's just like it, it really just like adds up over the course of this game for sure. Yep. I believe we're gonna have a run of this in the marathon as well. Uh, it might be the last run of the marathon. I I don't have the schedule in front of me, but I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So T Pat will be running it, I believe. So looking forward to so seeing stay that. Stay tuned. All right, we've got um, this. Hopefully, this this is a Twitch highlight, so it may not show up amazingly on the screen. <laughs> it actually doesn't. I'm actually gonna hide that. That that helps things a bit. <laughs> um, so this is a gym leader castle round one, run by Yandemonium. Uh, this is an N on the N64, um, two hundred one forty two. Appears to be a pretty sizable record um, by almost two minutes uh, beating the Worcesters uh, 203. Um, oh, I got some notes here. Um, and we got a great Bruno, but a bad Lance. Uh, Bad Sabrina, bad Morty, bad Claire, but an amazing Whitney and Faulkner. I don't know which fights the Lance or if it matters. This seems like Lance. Wabafet's a Wabafet's interesting. I don't know much about Stadium Two, so this is just like <laughs> interesting to watch. <laughs> Apparently the bad part was um, the Aerodactyl lead. At least for this fight. Uh, I see. Destiny you kind of have to like trade mons because you're using Destiny Bond with Haunter and, you know, Boba Fett. Oh, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we go again. I guess so. This reminds me of the one fight in Stadium where it's like you like um or no, it's it's not quite like that. But you uh one of the fights just like has all the Pokemon that like, explode basically. And so it would normally be like that, but you can you can just substitute and they just die and you live. But <laughs> <laughs> funny funny gimmicks like that they love to put in the stadium games. There's the Aerodactyl. I guess it, I guess it must have switched out. Oh yeah. yeah. I can imagine how that, that's really slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure. Okay, right. and then all right. Well, congrats to them. Yep. Don't see stadium too much, so it's good to see good to see, see a little variety here in our noted runs. For sure, for sure. Uh, we have one more run from the fan game side. This is a run I did of Pokemon Aquamarine, which I think will be the night of the the evening that this podcast airs. It'll be in the evening. Um, so I'll be running that. I was de-rusting. I had done a bit of rerouting for this um, a couple of months ago, but then I never really finished a run because I was kind of it was just a bit of a grind to even get a run going because pretty much the route is you start with an EV, um, you do a bunch of fights, you have all the Talifi on, which works out pretty well for a lot of the fights, and then you have to you can actually what I'm doing is I'm this might look familiar to anyone who's ran like Heart Gold Soul Silver. <laughs> Is I'm camping for a Drillber, and it specifically needs to be ideally level tw ideally level 30, but I can run as low as level 27. Um, but because my Pokemon's level 21, I might see level 21 Mons. The old route would actually bite more trainers to get a higher level, and that would mean I'd be more likely to run into a higher level Drillber. Um, and I actually did get a level 28 after a little bit of 
few other encounters. The problem is a lot of the encounters here have arena traps. You have to kill them. Um, and they're also pretty scary. They do a lot of damage. So this one I might have died if I didn't catch. Um, so I won't share too much about the run. It's a pretty interesting run that uses a lot of weird mechanic. There's a weird mechanic where you actually can skip a lot of um, sequences, like do a lot of sequence breaks, um, using a mechanic that's specific to this ROM base, I believe. Uh, <laughs> so it makes for some really weird routing. And oh, it better not be what I think it is that I've seen before. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so you'll see you'll see in the run on uh, on in this evening. Um, the eve Saturday evening when when we when we air this, um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of fun. Oh no, it's a, okay. It's a it's a, it, it's, a scoo it's a scooter. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Yeah, and you're playing as a Mew. Um, so anyway, uh, there's a lot. It's gonna be really fun. It's a really fun run. It's very very volatile. There's a lot of things that need to go right. This run was not perfect, and it saved like eight minutes almost on my PB. And I could definitely save more time, but you just have to have a lot of things go right. The Elite Four is insanely silly. There's like Pokemon, like every every fight. There's weather conditions. Um, oh. <laughs> there's one one of the fights. Three bonds have sturdy. It's and it's it's not they have sturdy. It's because abilities are random in this hack. So it, they might oh, have sturdy. They that. might not. <laughs> so it's uh, you'll learn a lot more in the run and see a lot more about. Uh, but this just this run went pretty solid. Um, I can't really uh, complain about it too much. Um, so you'll kind of see how that goes. So looking forward to showing it off uh, later on. Uh, we do have some honorable mentions. We'll just keep the we'll just keep the run up for now. I don't know if we have any timestamps for them, but we'll just kind of read through them here. We have Ananan getting the record in Japanese. Emulator, Fire Red, Leaf Green, any percent glitch list with a 20019. Uh, keeping it icy, getting uh, E4 round 2 in Fire Red, Leaf Green, uh, second place on the emulator uh, in English with a 33009. Uh, and then we have Lucas PGLP getting Black Manipulus second place in English with a 32339. And then we had uh, Headstrong getting fifth place in Let's Go Eevee, which usually we don't talk about fifth place runs, but this run was very close to being a sub three. Uh, it really just goes to show how how many people have gotten sub three and how much how far this game's come along. So mm -hmm. I'm sure she's gonna get the sub three soon. Uh, she's a very 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 solid runner. She's been running the game for a long time, so it's only a matter of time before that happened. We have also um, a run of Scarlet and Violet Moki Mayhem, which is, I guess, complete the game and all the DLCs. Yeah, um, it's like the GST equivalent. The yeah, uh, <laughs> but, it's a, but it's a 12 hour run. <laughs> so Brownies runs got second place in that. I believe Crisis yeah. has the record in that. So only yeah. I think only Crisis and, and Brownies have actually ran it. It's a very long category. Mm -hmm. So Shoutouts to them for for going through that entire run and putting up great times in that too. Uh, we also have a 1 PMD run, uh, SBD Wolf, PMD, Explorers of Sky Beat Dark Rye, Wonder Mail, English on the 3S, DS and 3DS. Uh, world record with a 6 hour 49.24. Mm. Oh, yeah, I guess you're, you're seeing some of the weird mechanics in the hack. We're kind of spoiling the surprise a little bit here but uh, <laughs> um we'll uh we'll talk about that a little bit later double battles are fun um we um obviously have um marathon runs coming up right after this do you guys have the schedule open yeah um, um right after we have barf doing pokemon in, in... oh yes yeah so that's one of the fan games yep yeah I um I also have another marathon run that we can talk about. Um, it's a uh, R RTA in Japan. Um, the runner by the name oh, of yeah. Zunao, is that his name? Zunao. I don't know if you've heard of him before. Um, Zunao 150 poke is his Twitch. Um, he's doing uh catch them all, Gen One glitchless in Japanese, on August 13th at 10:32 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So be on the lookout for that. 
Yeah, we forgot we forgot to add those in. <laughs> I guess. Uh there is also hold on, there is also I believe Headstrong is doing a run. Yeah. Headstrong on August thirty first, which is I guess in the month of August, <laughs> is gonna be running Let's Go Eevee for Speed Doxathon. Uh don't know the time just yet, but uh keep an eye out for that. And I think that's all we have, unfortunately, in terms of marathons. But we have the PSR marathon, of course. Yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the marathon right now. Absolutely. Okay, so I guess that kind of brings us to the end of the podcast. Um, how are we doing for time here? I know we were trying to keep this under two hours, and we're at an hour, just, uh, just under an hour and a half, so that's perfect. <laughs> um, so hopefully if the marathon's behind schedule, we got it back on track, but we'll... Uh, We'll see how things go. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the marathon. Our next podcast is going to be in September. Um, I'm going to be away the first weekend of September, so probably in the second weekend. We'll we'll see how that goes, depending on whether we're all available. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and make sure to follow Zypotic as well, who was on earlier and discussed his uh, Don't Get Urshifu and GST runs. And make sure you follow the hosts as well and follow us on Twitter. We do have a podcast Twitter or X. I don't think we post on it regularly. We should we really need to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I think I posted uh last time. So. Oh okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll remember to do it. Yep, for sure. Twitter. That's shiny. How'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> they're 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 set. Oh I know it's <laughs> But oh, uh, um, I I did forget about uh, what's it? BSG? BSG is happening. Oh, that's oh, true. Oh, right. Yep. Yeah. 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 So who else is who's running in that from the PSR side? Ekman's doing something, right? Sapphire, maybe. Yeah. Uh, soon Sapphire. Warteb's doing hit and run. That's not Pokemon or uh, Hitman. We are. Put this in the dock. Um, we also have Sidosh doing blue catch em all. Oops. On Monday, August twelfth. And uh ATM doing Crystal Minipolis on Friday the sixteenth. Oh. And we we have a uh, Naomi. Naomi plays doing uh, the Ultra Moon Rainbow Rocket section um, on August fifteenth at twelve oh one p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we have the same day Ekman's doing Ekman Larson is doing Pokemon Sapphire any percent glitchless um, at was that five fifty eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Um, and there's one more right. Yeah, crafted doing Pearl Medipus on uh Friday sixteenth, one AM. Okay, lots of go. lots of Pokemon at BSG. Love to see it. Yeah. I think there's one more marathon because I know in the when we were scheduling the marathon we had to kind of juggle kinda of organize things to kind of avoid all the other events. There might be a Maybe another event happening. Um, I'd like to say it's is it Flame Fatales that's happening or no? I actually have no uh, idea. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm scrolling yeah. through a bunch of Discord messages now to try to find. <laughs> yeah, but... I think I think if we find any other marathons that we we want to mention, we can we can put something in the chat or something around this point. Yeah, to, yeah, for sure, for sure. To uh to let you guys know but yeah this is all the ones we have so far and yeah i guess that's probably gonna be uh probably gonna be it for us like iron said uh make sure to follow zypotic and uh follow the hosts and check out our twitter and uh our youtube potentially <laughs> and yeah we'll be back we'll be back next month for another podcast. Yep. Enjoy the rest of the PSR marathon. We'll see you soon.